What's up everyone? This is your Mighty Mortal Ryback speaking. I am here today to bring you a guide to one of my favorite mid laners, Vagar, the tiny master of evil. He is tiny and he is indeed a master of evil because he will kill you quicker than you can blink. Trust me, I know. So, uh, on the right you can see our uh, base champion uh, Splash Art skin. Uh, this guide is going to cover uh, what the skins look like uh, on the splash art. They're not, not going to cover what they look like in game, so you can figure that out on your own on other websites of the sort. I'm um, going to do a quick little ability section here, then we're going to go into the main ability section and uh, items and basically how Vagar is played. So we'll start off with a overview of what skins are available or not available for this champion. Obviously you have your base classic skin, then there is the white mage Vagar, which is obviously based on the fact that Vagar looks like a black mage, so it's if you're a Final Fantasy fan, both of these costumes will kind of look similar to you because you'll notice that he basically just looks like a black mage but white. So, there's that. There's the Curling Vagar, which was for, I believe, the 2010 Winter Olympics. Unavailable currently. May come back, but we never know. Well, we'll I guess we'll know in two years. Uh, and then we have Vagar Greybeard. Eagle. He's got the ring. Obviously, it's supposed to be Gandalf. It's actually kind of cute. And then there is the Leprechaun Vagar, because Vagar is tiny and a master of evil. He fits very well in the Leprechaun mythos, so there's that. Next up is my favorite skin, Baron von Vagar. You can yell at people in German as you are smashing them with your magical abilities. And then uh, Superb Villain Vagar. This one's actually hilarious, uh, because solely because of the mustache and the monocle. So it looks interesting in-game, but not interesting enough for me to want to have purchased it. So as I said, Baron Von Vagar is my favorite skin to use. You'll see me using that skin in most of my Vagar videos. So we'll just leave this here as we describe to you some of the abilities really quickly and a little bit of a build guide. It's the build guide that I use, uh, and I'll go... I won't go in depth into it in the abilities, but I'll explain in the ability section why certain abilities are taken at certain times, and I'll explain that here as well. So first is Equilibrium. Vagar's mana regen is increased by 0.75% for each 1% of his mana missing, so the lower you have your mana, the better it is. You want to have your, if you're looking to optimize that, you want to have your mana at about like 35%, so it's constantly just regenerating for every spell that you hit. Then his Q, Baleful Strike, unleashes dark energy at the target, dealing magic damage. If a unit is killed, Vagar gains some ability power permanently. This is your main farm tool, in that when a minion is low enough, you just hit him with it. Uh, and once you get a certain amount of AP, you'll be able to wipe out minions by just hitting a Q and gathering uh, extra AP. In the ability section, you'll find out that this ability in the ability power gaining section goes a lot further. So you'll get to that soon. Uh, that actually, I max it out at level 9. I take it first, and then every other level until level 9. Dark Matter is the W. Vagar calls a great mass of dark matter to fall from the sky to the target location, dealing magic damage when it lands. It's like a two, I think it starts out as a 2 second one, and then it gets down to uh, 1.2 seconds. But uh, it's just a little, it's like Karthus's say, ability of the same type. It just drops a little dot on the ground, and then boom. Uh, although Karthus is, is exploded from the bottom, and Vagar's drops from the top. I take one rank of this at level 8 and then max it last. The one rank in level 8 helps you uh, get your combo off with Deathfire Grasp when you purchase that, which I'll explain that in detail later on. But uh, it's not useful until uh, you get your full E and your full Q. So you'll, you'll be one level short of your full Q. You'll have one rank in E and I think two ranks in... Excuse me. Well... Uh, one rank in W, one rank in R, and I think three ranks in E. Let me think about that for a second. Two or three ranks in E. Doesn't matter. Anyway, next you have Event Horizon. Vagar twists the edges of space around the target location for three seconds, stunning enemies who pass through the perimeter for a short duration. So it's a giant circle that has these claws that come up. And if your opponent passes any, like, section of that circle, they're stuck there and stunned. It's a really, 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 really good ability. You can use it as an initiator, uh, a uh, chaser tool, and an escape tool. Uh, all of these things are very handy for it. Uh, pick that up at level 2, then every other level of it is available, and max it out at 13. So that's one of the best abilities that Vagar has. Actually, I think you max it out at 15. 
No, it might be 13. I'm not entirely sure. Whatever. We'll just continue. Uh, primordial Burst is the R. Blast target enemy champion dealing a large base amount of magic damage plus 80% of the target's AP. This is why Vagar is one of the best mid laners in the game. Because it essentially says, if you're an AP mid laner, I am going to destroy you. Because it does a significant amount of damage due to your opponent's AP and your own AP. So... Mage, uh, mage ranged character, that's how Vagar rolls. We'll go ahead and look at the lore really quick. The lore is actually kind of funny. Um, so check that out if you want. Otherwise, we're going to go to the tips section. Pause now. Welcome back. Tips and items. There's your tips. There's your items. Uh, a couple of these are actually quite good. Uh, the Sork Shoes, the Doran's Ring, the Rabidon's Death Cap, the Death Fire Grasp, and the Jonia's Hourglass. Which you can choose to take or not to take. It's up to you. So... Uh, next up, actually, is the Runes and Mastery section, so we'll take a look at that right after this. And here we are, Runes and Masteries. We're going to start with Masteries first, actually. Um, Vagar being an AP champion, when he takes Masteries, he's going to want AP Masteries. So remember that, because that's a useful tip for later. Remember, AD for AD, AP for AP. If you put AP on AD or AD on AP, you're an idiot. Don't do that. Unless you're hybrid. And then, yeah. One in Summoner's Draft. Three in Brute Force. That, whoa! Oh my god! Um, okay. I'm an idiot. <laughs> We're gonna go, at, actually, I'm just gonna return the points. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's just do it on the way. <laughs> four out of four in Mental Force. Four out of four in Sorcery. One out of one in uh, Arcane Knowledge. You want three out of three in Havoc, because... Deadliness doesn't do anything for you. 4 out of 4 in Blast. Uh, 4 out of 4 in Archmage. And 1 out of 1 in Executioner. That's your 21 runes for that. Uh, you don't need the Summoner's Wrath because, yes, you're going to be taking Ignite. But uh, it's not that much ability power to help you. You want the extra 4 ability power to begin the game with. Especially on someone like Vagar who uses as much ability power as possible. And he wants the ability power immediately. Not have to depend on the cooldown of a summoner spell. Which later on, Summoner's Wrath becomes completely useless. You want to take 2 in Hardiness, 2 in Resistance, 4 in Durability, and 1 in Veteran Scars. We're going to save that because I'm an idiot. I apologize. Uh, so that is your 2190 offensive runes. You don't really want to change these very much. You can go into utility if you need the extra mana resistance or the uh, extra mana and the regen. Um, to do that, you could go... Let's see. You could go three in that. You can get one in Summoner's Insight because it, incre it incre decreases the cooldown on Flash. You can pick up uh, the 3 regen and the extra 0.5 movement speed, and then if you want, you can pick up the runic affinity if your teammates will allow you to get blue. My teammates never do, because they suck. Um, if that, if you know for sure you're never going to get the buff, then take, like, Spell Vamp. That's pretty much the only other one that's useful. But I think that the, the defensive ones are better, because you want a little bit more defense, and you want more survivability in lane when you are going up against AP champions, especially if you're going up against AD champions, because the utility build, it, it, utility section is not going to help you at all against utility. If you have mana problems and you can't manage it because you're new to the champion or just because you can't manage champions at all, go ahead and do utility. Uh, summoner spells, just so you guys know, you want to take uh, Flash and Ignite. Those are the two that you want to take. Do not ever take Clarity. You will be looked at like an idiot. Don't ever take Clarity. Flash and Ignite. If you need to, you can replace Ignite with Exhaust. If you want to just slow someone down. Me. So there you go. Let's go ahead and check out the runes really quick. Those are Rengar runes, not Vagar runes. Vagar runs pretty, pretty normal like most other champions uh, in terms of how... Uh, most of the AP champions in terms of how of the runes go. Marks, you want magic penetration, greater marks of insight. Seals, you want greater seals of replenishment. This gives you uh, extra mana regen, 3.7 per 5 when you get in-game. It's uh, Your glyphs are going to be greater glyphs of warding uh, for the magic resist. You need magic resist, obviously, because you're going up against AP 95% of the time. 
And uh, for your quints, you want greater quints of swiftness. You can go flat AP if you want, if you feel you need the extra AP. But I, I feel like the extra movement speed will get you in and out of position faster. Plus, Vagar, the only thing he has for an escape is a stun, and you want to be able to use that uh, as offensively as possible. So there are some times where you just desperately need to get out, and you'll utilize your uh, stun in that c capability. But you don't have, like, like the, the most escapey item you have is Flash. So... There's that. Those are runes of masteries. My apologies for messing up the mastery section. I am an idiot. I am mostly I mostly play AD. I very I don't very rarely play Vagar, but uh, I very rarely go mid. So I guess it's the same thing. I don't know. I like playing AD top. It's it's fun. So with that, that is the runes of mastery section. Next, we're going to uh, check out the ability section. So enjoy, and we'll see you in a bit. And we begin the ability section with the Q, Baleful Strike. It's essentially a direct damage attack, sim very similar to your basic attack, but if you kill any type of unit, champion, monster, minion, whatever, you gain an ability power if you score the killing shot. The added bonus to this is that if you manage to kill an opposing champion through any source of damage, you gain ability power equal to the level of the ability. This is one of the reasons why you want to max it as quickly as possible to increase the amount of damage it does to decrease the cooldown and to increase the amount of ability power you get from killing champions. So, great ability, attacker, opener, closer, whatever you want to use it for. Next up is Vagar's W, Dark Matter. It's uh, essentially a delayed ranged area of effect attack. And it's pretty useful for zoning out enemies. It's good for uh, delayed damage to make sure you can score like minion kills or something. It's also really good for clearing minion waves, especially if they're all packed together quite neatly. It's also good for initiating that Deathfire Grass combo that will be coming up uh, soon. And um, all around abilities, just trying to zone out your opponents or focus someone down if you know they're going to be at a certain point at a certain time. So use that wisely. Next up is Vagar's E, probably one of his most important abilities that he has in his kit. It drops a circle around, and anybody that crosses the line, whether it's inside or out, will be stunned for a certain amount of time based on the level of the ability. This is essentially what starts your entire combo chain that wipes out pretty much anybody and uh, allows you to get in important abilities such as that W or your uh, Q or your R if your opponent tries to get out of range. It's a good initiation tool, a good escape tool, but it's also a good closer and primarily what you're going to be using to set, a, uh, to set up your combo to make sure you hit that W and can knock out the champion in a very short period of time. Stun is great, use it a lot, use it well. And the last ability, Primordial Burst, his ultimate, blasts an enemy champion dealing a significant amount of magic damage, increased a significant amount by your own AP and your opponent's AP as well. This is what's going to allow you to dominate the mid lane at once you hit level 6, and if you can hit this burst, you're going to chunk off a significant portion of your opponent's health, and then the combo will be able to wipe out anybody in less than 3 or 4 seconds. Alright, here's the most important part of Vagar's build. Deathfire Grasp. What this thing does is it gives you cooldown reduction, ability power, and its active deals damage equal to 25% plus 4% per 100 ability power you have. This is the most integral part of the combo because it can chunk away the health of any type of champion that you're going to face. You start off the combo with your E to stun, drop the W, immediately hit the Deathfire Grasp, then Q, then R, and it'll wipe away your opponent's health just like you saw right there. It is the most powerful combo Vagar has in his repertoire of abilities and it's predicated on the cooldown of your R. But if you can hit this combo, you can destroy any AP based champion and most AD based champions as well. And now that you know how the runes and uh, masteries work and the abilities and your little Deathfire Grasp tutorial, we're going to go ahead and do the item build for Vagar. Vagar starts Boots 3, just like every other AP champion, or yeah, AP mid. You don't need to start any other items but Boots 3. Vagar's kind of slow, so he needs the escape, and the pots will help him sustain in lane. The next items you're going to want to pick up are uh, 1 to 2 Doran's Rings. If you need to speed a defensive item up, get 1 Doran's Ring. If you, need, if, you don't need any other, if you don't need any of that, then just take 2 Dorn's Rings. Dorn's Rings give Vagar three important items. It gives him AP, it gives him health, early game, and it gives him mana regeneration. Two Dorn's Rings puts you pretty much at your fine for the rest of the game for mana regeneration, even once you have to sell them for other stuff. 
After you pick up your Doran's Rings, you pick up Kage's Lucky Pick, specifically because it has the gold per 10. You want to start that other than Blasting Wand, just because Blasting Wand, yes, it does give you AP, but the Kage's Lucky Pick will get you Death Grasp faster. After you finish, after you do Kage's Lucky Pick, you finish Deathfire Grasp. All game, every game, every time, every situation, Deathfire Grasp. There's no situation that you are playing Vagar when you don't pick up Deathfire Grasp. Deathfire Grasp is the best item you could ever possibly pick up on Vagar because it's an important part of his combo, which was described earlier. Deathfire Grasp. After you pick up Deathfire Grasp, you want to pick up... Uh, your, you want to finish your boots, possibly. It really depends. If you feel you don't need the Sork Shoes, then just go on to your next items. But if you feel you need the Magic Penetration because they're picking up lots of Magic Resist early on because they know you're a devastating champion, then you want the Sork Shoes because it does give you that extra Magic Penetration. Otherwise, don't finish your boots until after you finish Void Staff. Uh, which, when you do do that, you're going to be picking up Ionian's Boots of the City, which gives you a lot of CDR. Cooldown reduction is very important to the way that he is played because of the fact that it gives you the opportunity to use your ultimate faster and your stun and your Q and your W, everything. Everything goes faster. But the most important part is the fact that it does reduce the cooldown on your ultimate, which is already kind of ridiculously long. So... After you after you pick up your main item, Deathfire Grass, you got two other core items, Rabadon's Death Cap and Void Staff. Ra Rabadon's Death Cap, Vagar loves it because it gives Vagar everything Vagar needs. Vagar needs AP. AP, AP, AP. All day, every day. Just like Deathfire Grass, you need AP. Rabadon's Death Cap is the single greatest item you can possibly pick up for Vagar. Hell, if you only want AP because no one can touch you, Pick up two of them. You won't get the second passive, but you're still going to get a burst of 140 AP, which stacks with your other Deathfire Grasp. Void Staff you'll pick up if you need more Magic Penetration than Sork Shoes, because you'll want to sell the Sork, the Sork Shoes for getting something else. Um, and uh, it gives you 70 AP, and it's also one of those items that if your opponents really aren't building Magic Penetration, it's not it's still not bad. It's a good item to pick up, because it does give you that uh, extra... AP cheaper than you would from other sources. So after you pick up those four items, your Deathfire Grasp, your Boots, your Rabadon's Death Cap, and your Void Staff, you'll be full right now because you have two Dorn's Rings. You'll sell those Dorn's Rings for two of these four items, and they all depend on situations that you want. Morello's Evil Tome, Abyssal Scepter, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, and Jonia's Hourglass. Two of them that are going to stand out right off the bat are Abyssal Scepter and Jonia's Hourglass. If you're fighting against a lot of AP champions or champions with a lot of magic resist or both, pick up Abyssal Scepter. A nice chunk of magic resist, a nice chunk of ability power, and it reduces the magic resist of, of opposing champions around you, which is always useful. The other one is Jonia's Hourglass, which you pick up for the armor and you pick up for being able to dodge Alpha Strikes, both Yi's Alpha Strike ability and the Alpha Strikes from other champions by just throwing a shit ton of abilities on you. Also gives you AP, also gives you armor. Lots of good stuff there. The other two items that are kind of iffy are Morella's Evil Tome and Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Rylai's Crystal Scepter is one of those items that you could get if you needed it for the health. That's pretty much the only reason why you would buy it other than the AP on it because the slow doesn't really help you as much since you have a nice significant portion of range and other champions should be slowing things for you to kill anyway. Morella's Evil Tome is one of those things that it gives you magic... It gives you ability power, it gives you regen, and it gives you cooldown reduction. Cooldown reduction may or may not be as useful depending on what you picked up earlier, what type of boots you picked up, and what type of magic penetration items you picked up. But uh, it, it is still a good item because of the fact that it does give you that AP. It gives you the Grievous Wound if you know your opponent's champion is a big healer like Mundo or uh, Trinomir for, for, if for some reason you are you have the misfortune of attacking a uh, Tridomir. But um, Grave's Wound helps there. Uh, obviously the regen and the ability power and the cooldown reduction because cooldown reduction. So, personally, what I take more often than not is Abyssal Scepter and Jonia's Hourglass because it just gives me a crap ton of AP. I think I've gotten up to almost 900. I got like 924 AP is the maximum I've had in a game before just because of the abilities, the items that I was running. So that's your goal. Just stack as much AP as possible because your abilities will just melt people away. So there's your item build. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, your recap is coming up next. 
So, all of these things together, the runes, the masteries, the abilities, the item build, the way everything works in conjunction, makes Vagar a very powerful champion to play, in that essentially you could wind up utterly devastating any type of mid laner that you go up against AP or AD, and you could completely destroy any other AP champion you fight in overall, in overall battles. Vagar is slow, he's squishy, and it takes a little bit to get him going, but once he gets going, whew, he is ridiculous, especially with the Deathfire Grasp combo that I showed, excuse me, Deathfire Grasp combo that I showed you earlier, and uh, with the way that he is built item-wise, if you can pick up, you know, 900 AP, you'll wind up being just that much more, and if you can get, at the, er get the early kills going, you're, uh, Baleful Strike will make it that you just continuously gain AP every time you kill a champion, and whenever you use it to farm, it just makes you that much better. Uh, Vagar is, I believe, the only champion that can get as high in AP as he can without just stacking six Rabadon's Death Caps, which is going to be the most out of everything, uh, including the passive on the first one. So, But Vagar can actually have a balanced build and still be that powerful. So, I hope you enjoyed the guide. Um, I had fun making it. I hope you, you know, learned something from it. And uh, more guides as they come along, because that's what I do. And uh, if you have a champion you'd like to see in a guide, let me know. I'll go ahead and let you know what I have on deck coming up soon. Or coming up after this. Not necessarily soon, because, you know, this all takes research. Uh, I'm going to be working on Ezreal, Vayne, Tarek, Blitzcrank once I pick him up, Lee Sin once I learn him, and probably try and bring you guides on Sona, Nocturne, and possibly Kale and Riven. So it just depends on, you know, circumstances and the situations. So, like I said, hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed making this. I hope you learn. I hope you become better Vagar players from it. And with that being said, this is your Mighty Mortal Ryback, signing out.